This is In Boot Camp, episode 18, Mongo, on Sunday, May 19th, 2019, with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at the nexus.tv slash IB18. Hey. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. Yep, yeah, it's uh, another cooler week. You know, we had some great weather last week, but we have a frost advisory tonight. Uh, that's that's pretty grim. Yeah, po- most of Minnesota, actually. It's been raining here also, and, and uh, the dog's not like when it rains. No, my cat gets very upset. It likes to meow really loudly throughout the house to let us know that it's rainy and doesn't want to go outside. But after your weekly update on your weather, we got a show to do. We sure do. So tell me about what you've been learning in class this week. Most of this week was actually finishing up and then presenting our group project too, but we did start a new unit, which was MongoDB today. Okay, so I think you should tell me about Mongo first and then tell me all about the group project stuff after. Yeah. So Mongo is a database very similar to SQL, except for not at all. SQL, no SQL, what's the difference? Uh, the no in it. Oh, but they share so many characters with each other. They do, but that's not how it works. Yeah. Um, so basically, just like when we were doing our SQL day, um, which they always do it on Saturdays when we have an extra hour, because it's mm-hmm. a four-hour class instead of a three, uh, getting everyone in the classroom with a machine that has it working tends to take a while, because there's always some person who has installation problems, because everyone has their own system. Like Some people are still using old Windows 7, some people are using Windows 10, some people are using some Mac thing, and so it's basically the first hour and a half is just them walking around saying do this do this do that and then we have lunch and then we actually start playing with mongo and so we had two things to install we had just you know mongo and mongo server thing and then we got the gui tools for it the robo mongo from 3t which is a weird name but um, it's just a gui that it's kind of like a sql workbench except for they actually give you the shell in there so like uh the sql workbench doesn't let you open up a SQL shell. Like, you can't just do stuff like that. Um, this is just... I, I love this RoboMongo. Um, and it's... There's a free-to-use community edition one, and then there's also a paid one. You can't really mess up SQL. It doesn't let you do that. Um, so when we were playing with it before, making our rows and columns and tables and everything else, if you're trying to do something that wasn't there, it would spit an error back at you. Um, this Mongo list lets you do anything. Um, I was, so I made a new collection because tables are too common to use. So instead of using tables, we use collections. And so I had a new collection and it was just, um, like it was the example was to just everyone, a a thing for names, um, rows, like it was like a classroom thing. And then one of them was an array of hobbies. And I was trying to insert into that array of hobbies and I used uppercase H for hobbies. And then, so when I printed it out, I, so I put in three hobbies and I added a fourth one later with an insert. Instead of throwing an error like there is no column for this, it made another one. So there is an array of hobbies, and then there is an array of hobbies with a capital H. And mm-hmm. this, this it doesn't have a defined shape. Like yep. SQL, when you have a defined shape, you can't break convention. With with Mongo, everything's allowed. Everything's an object. Everything's allowed. Everything is great. And that twice that got me where um i thought i did what i wanted to do and then it didn't and it didn't throw an error it just accepted it because it you know with the non-defined style whatever you want goes yeah that's one of the uh pros and cons of mongo and no sequel broadly which is that there is no schema defined and so the schema is whatever you put into it and that's that's great for something that's small or that needs um you know a lot of rapid iteration like when you're kind of trying to invent a new product, but it can get annoying when you, you know, aren't very skilled or or are new to a project uh, because then you can get into the trouble that you were in, which is, what did I just call that thing? Oh, right. Yeah. So in the real world, because you've been a developer now for years, have you been on a project that uses Mongo? I have not personally been on a project that uses Mongo. However, I've been on projects that use something else called DynamoDB, and DynamoDB is a NoSQL-like tool, uh, and it functions very similarly. It's from AWS. So one one other f- 
fun thing. Um, so when you open up a new shell and stuff like Python or SQL or stuff, like you know how you can do dash help or dash dash help normally? Yeah. Um, according to the docs, you can, but when I installed Mongo 4, um, I just get not a number. Cool. Yeah. Not a number. Well, it's JavaScript. It's JavaScript for the it's best JavaScript. or better part of my life. It's always JavaScript. Um, so now that you have been exposed to Mongo, what are they going to have you do with it? Uh, like, are they going to have you do like a comparison kind of like homework maybe? Well, one of our things was to spend 10 minutes discussing the pros and cons. Like, so we had, we were given three questions to do in the exercise. The first question was to go on Mongo's website and to find what they say about the product. What are the pros? And then to go out on like Stack Overflow or Quora and find out what people say about it. And, and, and what did you find out? Well, that it's better to duplicate data than to search through it sometimes. Yep. Um, and so... Do you know what the term for that is? No, I don't. That's a denormalization. So in, in regular r relational databases, there's this concept of normalization, which is instead of having the same data in multiple places, which is could be useful in some cases, but... What happens or what's dangerous that can happen is, let's say you have an address stored in one table and another address for the same person stored in another table. Somebody moves, you forget to update the second table, and now you have addresses that are out of sync. How do you know which one is the most up to date? You don't. You have no clue. What if you normalized your database, though, so that the addresses uh, in those two locations actually pointed to a third place, the address table, and I foreign key IDs were the... Uh, indicators the pointers to those addresses now what now you only have to update it in one place and by foreign key design they will get updated everywhere so one of the exercises we had in class was to make a new collection that just had your name what operating system you used what row you were in in the classroom or table number and then your hobbies and then you had to slack that out to everyone like you had to do like um db places uh whatever your collection was and then just find dot prettier and then or find parentheses and then dot prettier yeah otherwise you just get this non tabbed in string that looks hard to read yeah um but then you were had to insert that whatever got spit out but every single time you make a new collection it gives you an id and stuff so you you had to delete that and that's why this robo mongo is kind of cool because mm -hmm. you can paste in in plain text then you actually get a cursor and you can just Cut, 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 and then enter. Yeah, so there's a little integrated editor, which is nice. So basically that was what Saturday was, was just watching everyone install. And, um, you know, it was just a few lines with me and my Ubuntu install. And thankfully nothing broke. That is impressive. I, uh, I was on a project where we thought about using Mongo, and one of the reasons we decided not to at the time was getting it to play nice with our Ubuntu VMs was somewhat challenging. Ah. Uh. The meat of this week, though, was Group Project 2. Okay, now Group Project 2. So this has been going on for about two and a half weeks. I think we've been uh, talking about Group Project 2. And uh, this one was the second Group Project now, because that's why there's a two in it. Correct. And this one was all about using a database to store data and then using Express to somehow use an API to do something with that data. That seem about right? Seems about right. Okay, so how did that go? Uh, we wish we had more time. Um, I know you saw it, you fixed it, and you spent probably the most time out of any of us on it. We spent a ton of time on it, but we didn't get anything to work. Uh, you glanced at it, and within an hour and a half, you zipped through it and got a lot more functionality going. Um, but I'm proud of it, and I know you're going to say, oh, it was a pile of crap, and blah, 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 but uh, it was, I, I like it. it. We made a DD and d character creator. Um, it lets you input data and then uh, manipulate it after it's been posted into the database, and we use SQLite for everything, and yes, it could be better, but... Uh, it was my second project, and it was kind of fun to do a project that we picked. You know, you, we talked about th this throughout the week, and uh, Matt, Matt even came over for some uh, help. 
I think that's what we'll call it. Yes, and, twice. <laughs> tw- I don't even. I lost count after the first time. Uh, and so I. Some of the things that I noticed was that it seemed broadly, uh, from my observations, that you you don't have a lot of time in class to learn express and sequelize before you have to go and do this group project. You know, you you what you are given in class are a bunch of you know in class exercises and group activities. And you can kind of base some of this work on that. And you might have one homework that involves SQLize and Express really before this. But that's not really enough, in my opinion. Like, you need to see a bunch of APIs and you need to see a bunch of usages of SQLize that are independent from each other. And it doesn't seem like that's what you were shown beforehand. All the examples are practically the same. Yeah. And uh, when we had to make our routes for using Passport, I have no idea how to do that. Uh, and plus, I don't I had the core concept problems, and that's why I went to you. And, and so I, I actually really like that you call it the core concept problem. Well, I don't know what exp- what are routes. Routes are confusing. Well, so I think that's a really interesting observation. So uh, I would say a lot of junior engineers don't aren't aren't always uh, sound, safe and sound, or even unsafe and sound on those core concepts, like. What is routing? What 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 is this database connection? What does it mean to require something and then immediately put parentheses as if you were calling a function? But how? What does that mean? Like, what is that? And so, like, there's a lot of those core concepts that are things you just do, but you don't necessarily know why or how or for what. Remember when you were looking at that characters JS file and. Why Why does this file need to have this sequelize and data type function argument? Who knows why? Uh, and you, you asked for help on that, too. So I think there's a lot of those. Really, they're, in the Express homeworks and stuff, there's only like a few lines that actually use Express. And they always it's always just uh, an API route and then an HTML route. And it's just these two little things, and that's all there's ever been, really. Yeah. Um, so the other thing that I uh, noticed was that you tried to use Passport... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, Passport apparently is um not so good. Yeah, it worked ish. So, so it it just it turned out uh that the 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 team here decided to use um a login page that was um you know, split in half between like you click it and the page doesn't change. It just, you know, JavaScript's open another section for the login fields. And then there's a create account that this JavaScript opens another section for creating an account. But Passport, uh, for local usage, assumes that you're going to actually have regular pages so that it can do its proper redirects. Um, yeah, handlebars. Yeah, and that would have worked great. You could have just used handlebars for all of this. Uh, but since it the initial page had looked Ajaxy, uh, you tried to shoehorn Ajax into that login experience, and so that's why Passport was somewhat uh, angry. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing was funny. Uh, so I, I haven't used Passport like that um, because normally when I'm doing uh, auth uh, for work things, I'm using some kind of external provider like Okta or uh, Auth0. And so it's a lot different then. Uh, in this version, even though like you were using Passport local, apparently you still have to install the ex- the session manager and then you have to go put your is authenticated function all over the place, and 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 uh, the docs don't explain any of that. Yeah, and on the passports website, they link to a bunch of stuff that doesn't exist. Yeah, I noticed. So, I mean, not not so good. Yeah. yeah, and so like I would say that you shouldn't feel bad about that because this is a pandemic issue in the JavaScript ecosystem. It is uh, something you'll experience with basically every single third party library that. There is no uh, consistency when it comes to availability, and then even if it is available, quality in its cookbook examples. Uh, and this is one of the biggest problems with JavaScript uh, today. Uh, and then between that and being available, and then what if it's available but not for your version anymore? What if you are using um, you know, the latest version, but everybody's only ever written tutorials for like the oldest version possible? That doesn't help anybody either. So how did um how did your team do this time? Exact same. Um, two group members didn't do anything, and the other three really did a lot. Um, this we had this one guy who just went crazy with the UI, and 
he was just amazing with everything. Um, he he made everything from scratch. He designed everything. Uh, he contributed the most to the project easily. That's great. And, and then uh, some people really tried, and then another person never opened it. Practically, they opened it to put in something that broke everything, and it was like fifty lines of copied and pasted stuff from the homework that didn't even apply. But at least he could say he committed this time, mm-hmm. because last time he made zero commits. Yeah. And uh, I know you were saying that our 53 commits wasn't very high, but there was like 10 commits on our first group project. Well, so here's why I say it's not very high, because if you have a group of five people and you average that out, that's 10, per, 10 commits per person. That's basically what I do in an hour. Yeah, so you must really just commit every few lines then. I commit every few functions. Wow. And I think that's a good approach. And one of the reasons I do that is because what if there's a fire? But also, uh, I know what I do to everybody's code, which is spy on it. And I, I hope everybody's doing the same to me, my code. And by pushing frequently, all of the code that I have is, you know, checked out. Uh, it's it's out there for consumption. If somebody wants to see what I'm working on right now, they can just go look. It's fine. Uh, and so what did you uh, get on your project? What was your final grade? Oh, we all got an A. That is amazing. Yeah. I know you would say, like, I would give this a D minus, minus, minus. No. Barely pass. No, I would give it, like, a B minus, C plus. Yeah. C plus, maybe. Uh, So I would say that this one looked a lot better than your previous one. Well, okay. So for anyone who's just picking up the series, our first group project didn't even have font fan. Like, I mean, it was just stock eight whatever what an h1 was an h1 was whatever your browser made as a default font that was it there was you, no styling at all did you use bootstrap in this one i don't remember yes yes okay uh and and uh i guess before we move on here uh, i wanted to ask about your presentation since i didn't ask about it before uh because you oh. had to prevent present this product project to the group yeah and they actually let me do most of the talking for the beginning part um, That's good. They wanted me to do a quick summary of what D and D was, and what our project was, and what our real world problem we were trying to solve by making this. Mm-hmm. And so basically, I started with a quick history: how back in the seventies, this super awesome guy named Gary Gygax did blah blah blah, uh, made a fantasy game, and talked about the impact D and D had for the tabletopping community and for just RPGs in general and stuff. Because there's a lot of tropes and stuff that you just see in any RPG now. Um, and a lot, like the class structures and stuff were very common and popularized by D&D. And so even if you don't play D&D, you've probably played something that was influenced by it because it was kind of a genre creator. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically that took a long time and then talked about how Wizards of the Coast made it a money grubbing thing and basically kind of kind of made a little stab at them. Um, you know, If you put me on a pedestal, I'm going to rant and smoke and blow smoke about everything. Uh, yeah, I I know, and and so like the interesting thing about all of that is it's like almost none of that has anything to do with the actual thing, and that is what they wanted. I know, we but that's to, we had to fill ten minutes with a broken app. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the first three minutes were me ranting. So that's good, and then I guess other people also uh, talked a little bit. Yeah, so they all had to talk about what they did, and so like that must have hey, been a struggle. Here's a welcome page. It's got two buttons. Um, uh, for 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 the audience's amusement, would you like to tell everybody what the back end refers to? Oh, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. The back end is any part of the functionality of the website. So any buttons, any click handlers, any any events that fire in the front end, like like your on clicks and stuff. That, that's all back end. Back end's just functionality. A front end developer just just does the layout, just does uses a background image. It doesn't cover all the screen. Just 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 yeah, use the background. So that's what that's what a back end developer is in my team. Okay, I just just had to get that one out of the way. So before we move on from Group Project Two, I would like just to write down a very short bulleted list here of what you learned about you know either you know working with the team. Or, you know, about the things that you were using on the team or, you know, what, what did you learn? Okay. A lot. A lot, a lot, pick, a lot. Pick three things. All right. We're going to start with Travis and Git repositories and everything else. I'm handling it this time. I already made Group Project 3 because I could assume that it's going to be called Group Project 3. 
clever. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I want control. Uh, something. The remember how, uh, we talked about this last time about how our uh, lint rules were for like old JavaScript yes. and old everything and. Well, I'm guessing this curriculum was written back when it was mainstream. So before 2015, when was ES6? 2004? Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. So like three plus years ago was when this course in particular, this, this, the, these linting rules were made. Yeah. And nobody cared that they were old. Um, and so your arrow function, all the other things wouldn't work and all these other things. And so our fix was just like, Travis could fail, but still push to the master. No, that's wrong. Yeah, no, no, that's that's what we did. <laughs> that's not right. Yeah, so next group project, um, from the get-go, right before we even start doing things, um, we are going to have that. Okay, that's good. Um, and, and you're, you're going to set up your Husky, and you're going to set up your prettier... Yes, yes. Pre well, we're, so we're actually using React app next time. Oh, even better. Like, yeah. So we're, Mongo is going to be two more days. We're going to spend two more days on Mongo, and then we're starting React, and then we're starting group project three. Oh, that was so quick. So we're, we're already starting. I mean, because okay, well, well, we're over halfway done about, with the course Let's now. talk about Group Project 3 after. So two more things that you learned. I learned that nobody likes to communicate. Um, and that was a huge struggle. So all throughout this, I was tracking issues on our Kanban board. And nobody was using it. Um, and that is why nothing got done. Um, so a couple of the people weren't working on anything. Like, oh, I don't know what I'm supposed to be working. I don't know like that. Like, hey, could you pick one of these seven open issues we have? And, I mean, GitHub Projects has the issues board and the issues trackers. And you can assign people to it. And, like, oh, I want I, this is something I know how to do. I'm going to assign this to myself. Nobody wanted to do that. And in between, so when we had class on Tuesday, nothing happened between Tuesday and Thursday. There was no, we would communicate in class fairly well. But outside of class, well, everyone's got their own life. I mean, I have work. I mean, I'm never doing stuff during the day. But we communicated rather poorly. And also, so we were tracking, I was under the impression we were tracking one set of data and we weren't, tra I wasn't tracking hit dies and all these other things that like save, saving dies and all these other counters. And so people were counting on information that wasn't being stored. And that was a, that could have been preventable. That could have been prevented really easily with dialogue. What is your plan for fixing that issue next time? Ah, it's a self-solving problem. We get to pick our group members. Oh. So well the first two they picked, but we are allowed to pick. I see. Okay, then. And the final thing that you learned. That I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, I just need... Like, I thought... I See, when I do these homeworks and when I do these exercises, they're designed that you can do them really easily. You can crush them. If you're half paying attention in class... You copy, paste, and you're done with the homeworks. It's just, they're all boilerplate the same. Like, I mean, the homeworks are, or the, the in-class activities are just slightly, like, you tweak them, and then the homework's done. Yep. And that's not enough. You, you can't create something new if all you do is that. And whenever you do something new, you kind of see your own shortcomings. Um, right, every time. Uh, and uh, I don't know what I'm doing is a wonderful quote, and I say it every day, all, all the time. I don't know anything, and it's true, despite what everybody believes. So what I would say for you is there's not enough time. There wasn't enough time given to practice with those tools outside of the way they were shown the first dozen times. Uh, and, and doing novelty things, in other words, doing things that are actually new to you, those are the things that make you learn and progress forward with those tools and and not having enough time to do that is a pretty big problem. Yeah. Which moves on to group project three. And he said, you can start, you, sh you should be start thinking about your groups right now and what you want to do. And we already went over the requirements, even though we're not technically starting for a few weeks. Okay. So let's, let's get this straightened out here. So it's week 18 now, which means yep. there's six weeks left. That's how numbers work. That's how numbers work. You have my total agreement. So, so maybe two weeks until the group project starts, and then you get a month for the group project? I don't actually know, but we're going to basically, during group project three, we're going to talk about computer science things, which I don't fully know what that means yet. It's very ambiguous. Um, but so I know for sure we're going to get two days with Mongo. We're going to get Tuesday and Thursday. And then we're going to have Saturday off because of Memorial Weekend. 
Okay. And because Monday's actually Memorial Day, we're the Monday class is going to have off. And so because Monday has it off, Tuesday will have it off. And so when we come back on Thursday after having two class periods off, we'll start React. And after three days on React, we start Group Project Free. Okay. And we're allowed to pick our own group members. So the, the first project had to use Firebase. Second project had to use SQL with SQLize. And the third project has to use Mongo. Yeah, and React. But, okay. you know, Firebase, SQL, like, just the database has changed every time. Yeah. That seems fair. Yeah, I mean, it's... You get a tentative grasp on something and you move on to the other ones. It's fine. Tentative is even a strong word, I would say. Uh, a loosely typed grasp. Loosely, like, yeah. yeah. I would agree with that. And he said that he would like us all to try to make a game or something fun this time. But mm. it's pretty much the same whatever you want to do, you do. Yeah. And... We had a kind of an idea, but we're, we're not sure even what our group is going to be. And he did say that for Group Project 3, if there's something you just dream of doing, you can work by yourself. Oh, so that was an that option. Nice. You can be a group of one. That's what I would do. Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm going to do quite yet. Being a group of one is just so much faster and easier. Well, plus then when you... Because I know you said that you should make something on your own... That's outside of class and stuff. No, this wouldn't be counting because it's still for class. <sighs> yes, I, of course you would say that. I would say that. And also when I mean something on your own and outside of class, I also mean something that you literally pour 200 hours into. That's almost as much time as I have in Breath of the Wild. Yeah, but I don't play games. So that's why um, Yeah, I could say that. Next week. Uh, what are you doing Wednesday next week? Ah, it is Open Source North, the one day conference that is the biggest open source conference in our region it's pretty cool uh like 47 minute sellout rate it's pretty good yeah we, within three days it completely sold out and there are 700 some spots available yeah so this is a uh fun conference to go to it is actually one of the better ones i would say i've been to a few in the local area and this is actually one that's good because instead of just focusing on just javascript or just devops or you know, just a singular topic. This one's much more spread out, and I I appreciate that a lot because, um, you know, as as a person who is in the industry right now, I often get pigeonholed into JavaScripty roles because apparently I know JavaScript, but I also know a lot more than that, or I, uh, apparently I try to. Having the uh, access to other topics other than just JavaScript is also very enlightening. Yeah, and then there's a lot of talks and. On the second half of the day, the one and only Brandon Johnson is doing a talk on VR, or what was it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, if I was smart, I would have had it already up, but... Um, That's okay. There's, also, there's you should listen to Podkit. You should listen to Podkit, and uh, we'll probably be having our next episode of Podkit after that uh, event, and I'm sure Brandon will tell all of us about how exciting and... Uh, fun that talk was to give world scale ar with react native and so when you when you go to um open source north this will be your first conference there will be a lot of people there um what are you going to do well i'm going to look around find a corner stick there until this talk start yeah um so that's an option uh you should also try to talk to some people that would be good um you might consider bringing a couple of resumes or i don't know business cards or something because there will be um, job vendors there of uh, various sorts. Uh, you should also participate, uh, assuming they do it, and I think they've done it every year, the scavenger hunt thing, which is basically just talk to each booth and then they'll stamp your scavenger hunt card. And then th at the end, you can turn it in and win prizes potentially. Yes. Um, so just... Uh, there are a ton of companies that are sponsoring the event. Uh, and not every SPI, company TCF. not every company that's on that list will actually have a booth. Some will, some won't. A lot of them were at HackerX. Yep. We'll see if the same recruiters show up. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, and I don't know if we talked about it last time, but the recruiter that talked to me uh, told me that the job is gone. The job is gone? I didn't get it, and it was also just gone they didn't have money just 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 gone they didn't have money for a job that wasn't even it's a good hold. job 
Yeah, see, that's a good sign, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. I'm glad I didn't quit the post office because I was so excited to, you know, be a premier Java developer with, you know, cutting edge customer support tools, customer support skills. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that didn't pan out either because it sounded like a terrible thing. Yeah. So where can we find you on the Internet? You can find me at MatthewPetrol.com, which I will have updated by Thursday because this week's homework is to update again, again, because... One of the projects we, our first project was, our first homework was to make a profile page of ourselves with like a kind of like a resume, everything, like show your work, show that. And we've been adding to it. And so after every group project so far, we've been told to redesign it. You, you guys all know more, build your site better. And, so you're uh, going to do that? Yeah, well, I already have it up. Um, I just want to tweak it just a little bit more. Uh, Excellent. I'm not happy with it. And I suppose it's kind of happy to, it's hard to be happy with something you think looks like crap. And I see so many cool web resumes and design sites out there for, and I bought petrol.dev and I've never used it yet. You will have to do that soon. Actually, hopefully before Open Source North. That would be ideal. Because that would be the time to show off my awesomeness. Yes. Uh, and of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially at uh, Twitter at RyanMR. And of course, on my website, RyanRamperset.com. And, of course, you can follow us on Reddit and leave us comments there at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. And you can support us if you really want to, sometimes, I guess, at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. And where can we find the show notes for the show? You can find this episode's show notes of IB number 18 at the Nexus.tv slash IB18. Very nice. And you have a good one. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.